Mark Shuttleworth has announced that Ubuntu 18.04 will return to the GNOME desktop, so this release of Ubuntu 17.04 will likely be the last time we will see Unity. So any criticisms I have against it at this point will be like beating a dead horse. It is not to say this is the end of Unity entirely, it is merely the end of the financially supported release of Unity. Unity 7 will be supplied in the Ubuntu repositories, but will be unlikely to receive any updates. On the other hand, Unity 8 has been forked and will continue to be developed by the community. Both Unity 7 and 8 are supplied in Ubuntu 17.04 and you can switch between them at the login screen. I am running Unity 8 in Kimu and performance is utterly abysmal. And actually this is a wider issue with Ubuntu that performance has dramatically decreased. Version 16.10 was one of the best performing versions in lighterweight machines and in VirtualBox. But I don't know what has happened in the last six months because I have to say 17.04 has to be one of the worst performing on lighterweight machines. I'm running it in virtualization simply because my machine will not work with the mere display manager. NVIDIA proprietary drivers? Nope, that's ruled out. And look, I'm not even running anything and it is using nearly 100% CPU just to render a static desktop. I know the figures of a graphical system manager can be a bit skewed, so let's take a look at it in terminal. Huh, authentication required. I suppose that's a feature of the phone that you don't want people messing around with your desktop. Well, there you are. That's a telling story. The desktop is using 785 mega RAM and about 15% of CPU. Ouch. At least with Unity 8, I can say the icon sizes are consistent throughout the Unity launcher. Unlike Unity 7, where they're all odd sizes. Hmm. Oh, what can we complain? Most of the development work has been focused on Unity 8 recently. I've got the desktop mode selected here. It is good the way they've got the applications to display differently between phone and desktop or tablet style interface. I think with a bit more work, Unity 8 could have been really good on the Convergence desktop. It just happened that marketing forces went against them. And perhaps some of the decisions made by Mark Shuttleworth and Canonical really did cause too much split within the community and they were left to have to develop the whole thing on their own. For one thing, they should have gone down the Wayland route and at least been backwardly compatible with Xorg. AMD, Nvidia and Intel all refused to support the mere display manager, so Canonical had to engineer it all from scratch. I bet that was no small undertaking. We have an Ubuntu web browser here. I wonder if this will continue to receive development. To be honest, I've been a bit sceptical about most of these smaller web browsers. I prefer to stick with the mainstream browsers like Firefox and Chrome, simply because a browser is a very complex item and has to protect you from a wide range of attacks on the internet. Let's switch back over to Unity 7 to continue this review. In terms of new features, they are all on the back end. We now have the ability to use Internet Printing Protocol and Apple AirPrint printers without installing any drivers. And you no longer need a swap partition on your system, as Ubuntu now uses a swap file, which will be up to 5% of free disk space, or 2 gigabytes, whichever figure is smaller. And as I mentioned already, the other change seems to be abysmal performance on lower spec machines. At least Unity 7 is a bit more lightweight and running a lot better in this virtual machine, I'm so annoyed with it really because Ubuntu 16.10 was so much better and that was one of the advertised features that it ran a lot better on a virtual system. In terms of performance on a full system install, Ubuntu 17.04 is perfectly fine. The stability seems to have improved. Perhaps that is in part to the newer kernel. The GNOME application has been upgraded to version 3.24 with the exception of Nautilus which has been held back to version 3.20. Terminal and the software store have been held back at version 3.22. This is likely because Canonical have been adding patches to re-implement some of the features that GNOME have removed. Oh, it just gets me with GNOME how many features they remove. Initial indications from Mark Shuttleworth seem to indicate that a lot of these features that Canonical puts back into GNOME will just be removed. They're trying for the stock GNOME desktop. In other words, there won't be much difference between Ubuntu, Debian and Fedora all of which will have the default GNOME desktop. With the latest release of LibreOffice version 5.3, 
you can change the style of toolbar layout. This is called the Muffin interface and we can switch between four different layouts. This example here with the notebook interface is very similar to the Microsoft Office. In terms of applications on the system, it is very basic. We have LibreOffice, Impress, Calc and Writer, Firefox with your web browser, Rhythmbox for the audio player and Totem for the video player. New applications can be installed from the GNOME Software Center, which is not as feature rich as Synaptic, but it does look a lot fancier. If you're considering an upgrade from the long-term support release of Ubuntu 16.04, well, I wouldn't really rush to it, I mean, unless you're really after the newer printer drivers, the swap file instead of a swap partition, and the newer kernel, which will be useful for owners of Intel, KB Lake, or AMD Ryzen CPUs, then, yeah, it's just not really worth it. If you're upgrading from Ubuntu 16.10, which was just an interim release, you're pretty much going to have to, because support expires in three months. Overall, I have to say it is a disappointing send-off to the Unity desktop. Unity could have had so much more potential to it, and I've proved that just running a Unity-like desktop in KDE. Anyway, that is my thoughts on Ubuntu 17.04. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later. <laughs>